So I'm now super delighted to welcome Paula, who's going to tell us six things that she has learned about the dressable TV. So ladies and gentlemen, Paola Colombo from Public Italia. Thank you, thank you, John. Hello, everyone. Okay, so six things, why six things? And that's, uh, it's a weird number for a list. You normally go to five to 10, but six is because of one of my favorite quotes. And actually it's something that belongs to, to here to my, uh, when I was living here in London. So I had a wonderful time in London uh, but it were some months that were pretty difficult. And I remember finding this postcard in a pub, you know, the ones you, you get, with this quote, uh, which was, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. I don't know if any of you has ever heard it, but it's a quote from Lewis Carroll, Alice in the Mirror. And it's a conversation between the Queen and Alice, and the Queen is explaining to Alice, you know, if you want the impossible to become possible, you have to train yourself, you, you have to work really hard to believe this is gonna happen, and it finally will. So it's a bit high, but that reminds me a bit of our experience in media set with addressable advertising. So we, we started uh, looking at this on the international landscape. We really wanted to work in it. First, because we are very passionate about what we do, and so if you are geeks as well as we are, uh, and you love your product, you want to keep it advanced with the you know, best-in-class technology, best-in-class products and updates you have out there. So we really pushed for it, and, and we went through. And it, we, I think we had a successful story to tell. So we're very humble about it. So we don't know everything. We don't have all the answers. What we believed, we answered six questions, and I'm going to share it with you. So then I'm going to be available and around. So if you have any questions or any feedbacks and experiences you want to share, I'll be very happy to. Um, so the first question that we've got was, how do you integrate addressable TV in a media plan? So where does it stand? Is it digital? Is it TV? And then there is another underlying question that we got from you know, internal management in the company. So I don't know, how many broadcasters are there here, if any? Okay, is there any advertisers? Representative, welcome. Uh, uh, tech providers? Okay, so, so this is the story a bit from behind the scenes, what happens at the broadcasters. And when we ask for all the tech investments and some of the team uh, is here, you know, our CEO was like, okay, great. So we're building all these, but is that gonna actually add to our business or are we just transferring in advertising investments to one line to the other? You know, is that gonna create growth for us? It's just like shift, shifting around uh, revenues, which wasn't very easy to answer in the beginning. And when we went to market, advertisers were asking us like, but is this digital or is this TV? How do you measure it? How do you buy it? You know, does it, does it mean that now I'm not gonna do linear TV anymore because I can do connected TV and they're addressable and they have targeting and so much better? Well, actually, what we found out that it's very flexible, it's hybrid, it's not TV, it's not digital, and it can fit in any media plan, so that's not a sales pitch, even if I'm uh, working for a sales house, but effectively, so you can have targeting and profiling, and we have lots of brands that have their national campaign, they still need to reach many people in a very short period of time, so they do need broadcast, but then they know they have a specific target, and so they want to run a specific, like, target maybe to a community of people with a certain interest, or they know they're weaker in their market share in certain region in Italy, and so they, they increment their budget and they add a line of campaign uh, with this targeting on top of linear TV. Then, uh, the case for fast moving consumer goods, so I don't know what industry the advertisers that we have here today are, but what we have found, and it's replicating with a lot of brands now, is that they have massive campaign, you know, they're, they're called mass, pro mass market products for a reason. So they have this very big campaign, 60% reach, 70% reach. So how do they grow more? Because they're fighting for market share with their competitors. So the more people they reach, the more they can grow their market share. And that extra reach is very expensive because to get that extra reach, you have to target light TV viewers. So first, these light TV viewers are very in line with the on-demand TV consumption, so you can easily find them with addressable TV on your apps, but also you can track anything that happens on a connected TV. So we developed an HBB TV application, so once a user is connected of 
on one of our broadcast channels, minute by minute, we know what's going on on the TV screen. So we know if they have been exposed to an ad, how many times, or if they haven't been reached at all. And so we can run an addressable campaign to those users who haven't been exposed, or some telco clients are asking us to reach uh, effective uh, frequency, uh, uh, frequency. So for example, we know who has been exposed only twice to their linear campaign, and they know that is not enough to get through. So we target those users and we increase frequency up to four or five. You can also get creative, even though I know it's hard to have many video assets, for example, but you can create storytelling. So I know you've seen the spot on linear TV, and then I'm gonna target you with an addressable spot that has a different story, has maybe a stronger call to action then. And that has proven really successful. So we proved that we can add extra reach to as many as five percentage points. That you know, once you, your linear campaign is 60% reach, five points, it's a lot. Um, the other point is that it is actually true that we managed to bring new advertisers to TV. We have a baseline of client that is huge. It's more than a thousand clients on linear TV. So we felt it was impossible. We felt that almost everyone was advertising with us on TV, but actually it wasn't. Uh, and so, you know, locally distributed clients, advertisers, sorry, or it might be luxury. That was very interesting. And as a, you know, a big fan of shoes and bags, I was very proud we could actually bring some of the biggest Italian fashion brands onto TV because that's not the typical medium. But there you can take select shows and you can select very hot market audiences and then show and create the right environment for the brands to show. So again, that was an achievement. And I must admit that we weren't specifically targeting new to TV advertisers, but they happened to, to come to us and advertise. And we added 4% customer base to our company. You know, and with these big numbers, the turnover for me to say Italy is higher than 2 billion. You know, it's, it's a huge uh, effort, it's a huge achievement as well. So now that you know they can live together on a media plan, so how do you deliver on that? <laughs> because this is easier said than done. Because okay, they can sit together in the media plan, but then you have to make it coherent also on delivery. Uh, and that was tough because I don't know how the other broadcaster would be interested to know, but for us, the digital assets, digital technology, digital delivery and operations and engineering teams and the traditional TV are totally separated. They have two different ways of working, uh, technologies, workflows, checks. Um, it was very hard at the beginning. And I think that is literally the real digital transformation. So it's not creating a digital product, but having your company to embrace. And it was amazing actually to see these two groups starting to work together, finding out solution, actually meeting each other for the first time. Sometimes, you know, we are, we are big, we have more than 3,000 employees. So imagine in this huge company sitting at the table together, very enriching for both sides. And there's a lot that TV linear can learn for digital, but it's also true the other way. So there's a lot of the experience, the know-how, uh, and the story of TV that can enrich digital teams as well. Uh, so we brought that together, and then we had to bring it together the, for, for the advertisers. And the, that meant for us to have technologies that could read what was happening in a TV break to make sure we knew which spots were aired through broadcast so that the linear, uh, the broadband delivery was in line. So you don't want to show the same advertiser twice in the same break because one is broadcast and the other one is broadband. So we had to uh, develop technology for that. We have to be very careful in how we developed a replacement on linear dynamic ad insertion because User experience on TV is a whole different thing than from digital. So I have a digital background. And on digital, everything is quick. Nothing is permanent. So one thing that user sees, the other doesn't see. So you know, you, there's an ad that doesn't work. doesn't matter. You know, after 20 seconds, you don't see it anymore. That's not the same on TV. So nothing can go wrong. Uh, and so there was a lot of effort to ensure that user experience, not only for the content, but also from the advertiser side, uh, was very, very accurate. But we know that user experience doesn't end on a TV screen. As consumers yourself, you know that you start watching 
a piece of content on TV on the big screen, then you keep going on your mobile phone where you're transferring to work, and then maybe you know you hide on your PC, you unfinish your series uh, uh, and some other stuff. So it's it's a conversation that a user is having with content, but why should it be different for advertising? You know, advertising, it's a conversation between a brand and the consumer. So we wanted to keep that flow going. Uh, in order to do that, we had to start this uh, quite long journey. I admit it, it didn't come easy. To create seamless communication, it meant to know which users were behind the same TV screens. Um, and what they were consuming. Now, we have a bit of a lucky position because we don't ha only have TV broadcast. We also are the biggest di digital publishing company in Italy and the biggest radio broadcaster. So we have digital radio. We have 60 sites, 60 brands on digital and TV. So we reach a lot of consumer in a lot of time of the day. And so through an algorithm, we were able to connect a TV set with all the people in the same family. We called it the family graph. So in doing so, we were able to create this, this family and knowing what they were interested in, transferring targets to one screen to the other. So for example, if they were passionate about healthy cooking because they were surfing that specific page on one website, we knew that we could serve them a campaign on Connected TV based on, on that. But also, we know, for example, that they haven't been exposed on TV to an ad, we can create that extra reach on their mobile phone. Or again, we can do sequencing. And so we do, do your big branding message on TV, and then you deliver them the day after or the afternoon the call to action on their mobile phone. So you keep the conversation uh, going. But that led to another, let's call it opportunity, because we are taught to be pro positive. But you know, like, does it does it work? So my consumer sees something on TV. Uh, uh, you know, is it actually doing something afterwards? So brands, especially when you meet uh, small medium businesses and you know entrepreneurs, are like, okay, this is all very cool, but uh, am I going to sell more? And the same, we're asking like our internal teams. They are very you know very strong minded about these like. But are we selling these? So are our clients selling more of their products or is it just storytelling? It's like, okay, it has data, it has the impact of TV, so it should work. Yeah, I was telling, yeah, you know, why, why shouldn't it work? But of course, that's not confident enough as an answer. And as data gigs, we needed something more. So we scouted a bit around on the market, and actually we, we, we started conversation with TV Squared, but for privacy reason, internally, it was a long journey that we are still conversation that we, we're still having. But we couldn't find an attribution product that was actually doing what we needed at that moment. So we created one. In 2020, uh, we, acquired, we acquired this company, which is called Bintu. And they have, it's like having a super panel of 8 million users in Italy that have the SDK on their mobile and based on what you surf, but also on the physical locations that you're visiting with your mobile, they're able to track your interest, you know, so that they know if you're effectively uh, doing sports or you're just claiming you're interested in sport, which is two very different things. You're actually going to the gym uh, or just claiming to be very sportive. Um, but I can also track if you're effectively, if you are going to a dealer, uh, if you are going to a shop, and so on. So through our data platforms, one we knew, you know, the family behind the TV screen, we could connect the last mile. So we could connect what actually people were doing. If they were actually going to uh, a dealership after watching uh, the ad, or maybe if they were surfing a site as, after we showed them the connected TV campaign. And so we started building attribution modeling and we actually proved that it worked. But the second step, so we could see an uplift in people actually going to the dealership. And for us, this is also like an interesting example um, of what can happen, you know, in the whole cookie-less discussion, the whole cookie-less world. Uh, because we ended up working with a super panel. So we've been used on digital to work with big data. So any action is tracked and you can reconnect it to something else that happened online. So it probably is not gonna be like that anymore or at least it's not gonna be that easy. 
in the past, or linear TV has always worked with panels. So you have an interviews for like 2,000, 3,000 people, and then you have very accurate, accurate expansion mechanism. So here we have started learning that there's actually a way in between uh, where you can work. So you ha can have these mega panels. In the case of this attribution modeling, often we end up with 300,000, 200,000 people that are actually doing an action after seeing an ad and we can track them. So it's somewhere in between that you can get with very explicit consent from the consumer. So you, we, we, you, blah, sorry, we will still be able to do it in the future uh, and, and fits in, you know, in, sits in between the two worlds. And we started doing that. We started doing with connected TV and we proved an uplift in the group that was exposed to the campaign. But then we said, yes, okay, the connected TV, we are pretending that they didn't have the huge linear campaign that they had with us. And so we created attribution, multi-touch attribution. So we had linear TV and connected TV. Yeah, but no, you know, we know we have digital. And so we lately introduced digital and we are now looking at introducing digital out of home. And it's very exciting uh, for us because as I said, we are geeks, but also for, for our brands, you know, because then they can start getting some insights on how they should build their media plan and their strategies. Uh, so again, a lot of experimentation. I have to say that a lot of advertisers have been very open and very excited about this. So we were really open. We had permission to fail. You know, we sat and we tried to see what we could learn and what we could do together. So now that you know it works, it appeals a lot also to smaller brands, smaller uh, companies that maybe don't have big budget and they normally advertise with OTT platforms. TV is built lucky them for big budgets. You know, the average TV campaign is a few hundreds of thousands of euros. Campaigns on digital is maybe tens, tens of thousands. And maybe if you look at small medium businesses campaign of TTs is maybe a few thousands. So we had to scale, you know, we have this power tool, we had to scale. So we built a self-self platform, which we used internally first. Uh, and actually, thanks to that, we could triple the number of campaigns without adding nobody to the team. So we were able to manage the extra world thanks to work thanks to technology and scalability. Uh, but also, we can target now smaller companies in the country. So we are rolling out now to small agencies, digital agencies throughout Italy to see if we can approach new advertisers for us. And lastly, and I have one minute and a half, so I'm going to be quick. Uh, cooperation uh, and collaboration is key because how do you standardize? You know, advertisers have headaches because if anyone comes up being original and having the greatest idea of all time and created that new format, they get an headache because they don't know how to put it into their media plan. They have to spend extra money for creatives and so on. So we have started a conversation in Italy with all the other broadcasters and we might be a bit slower, but it's better if we go slow, but we go all together. And so we have standardized, we started easy with definitions. So we make sure we all call the same things in the same way. Then we started with measurements. So how do we want to be measured? And actually we are lucky because in Italy, Auditel is developing what is called Auditel 2.0, which is our GIC is developing measurement cross platform. And by Q4 this year, they will be able to measure the, du the duplicated reach of a campaign across screens. Um, and then we standardize what we tell to the market and we look uh, as one. So that it's difficult, especially for me, I'm not very patient. So having all these discussions sometimes is hard, uh, but it is paramount and it's key if we want this healthy product and industry to grow uh, in a positive way. So I am over 13 seconds <laughs> before the end of my time. Thank you very much for listening to me. Stay one minute. I think we can just probably squeeze in one question. Any questions? Yes, we've got a question at the back there. I don't know if there's a mic. Maybe you just shout. Oh, there's a mic. Oh, a mic. On, not you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Paola. Hi. Um, it sounds perfect. What are the gaps? What, what, are, you, are you just going to retire in the next month? It, it all sounded fantastic. <laughs> I wish. What, no. what, what are the bits that you're missing? Uh, what we are missing is actually one thing, one thought that I've shared today. So we're doing a lot of this talk about data, data-driven advertising. 
And I think one thing we have to be careful of is that we are broadcasters, so we are about content and we are about storytelling. So I think the risk of all these is that we are going into a place where we're going to lose our nature, so that we lose content. We know how to position brands because that's our job, that's what we do for ourselves. So that's the first thing. The other thing is that it's very slow. So as I said, and I always say my kids, like, I'm sorry, you were not gifted with a man with patience. Uh, <laughs> it takes time. It's a lot of conversation, maybe a lot of worries, because you know, it's growing really fast. But still, as I said, you know, our turnover is $2 billion in Italy. You have a very important legacy business. You know, it's like switching around this huge thing, and you have to be careful that you create value without destroying whatever's been built. And the other um, nasty thing, no, it's not nasty, but the other difficult thing is that the players you're up against week with, because you know, it's not a secret, you have all the platforms that are now coming, uh, you have the OTTs, it's a different offering, and that's why it's important that we value our brands and our you know, being uh, publishers, um, but they're, they're big, they're powerful, they're also very differently regulated from how we are as broadcasters, and I'm sure uh, the other broadcasters feel this very, very much. So we are up against in a competition where we are not playing on a playing level field. So that's a bit, um, that brings some concerns. Paola, that is it. We are timed out. That's a great answer. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs>